How's it going? Sorry for the little delay there. Just trying to get something set up in the different repo so I could show you what I'm doing in my test React app that is actually linking this package I'm working on. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that at a different point. Hey, uh, Chance, what's up? Thanks for joining. ATD, as usual, appreciate you coming in. What's up, Ryan Warner? How you doing? Happy Friday. Despite everything that's going on, I figure we might as well hop on the stream, have a drink, and uh, do a little coding before we start the weekend. You got a chance? You can hear me? Are the levels good? Let me know if uh, the music's too loud or the, the mic isn't loud enough. All right, so I'm, I've scaled my monitor. Hopefully you all can see the text better this time. So you're gonna see me doing this, switching between a couple different windows here. Um, so last time, and this is a little inception-y, I'll, I'll change this out in a second, but last time we were building um, this plugin, which essentially I want it to be for live streamers to be able to use on their website. And it's gonna embed a live and responsive stream when you're online. If you're not, it's not gonna embed anything right now. Um, so, Currently, what I'm doing is I'm only using Twitch. So I actually think that what I wanna do here is I wanna add support for Mixer and eventually for YouTube. Um, and I'm pulling these uh, these props in from another package or a, a, a create React app that I have running. And inside of it, I've linked locally uh, using Yarn Link that package to this or this package actually that we're working in to that test create react app. Tap tad loud for you, Ryan. Yeah, I can, I can bump that down. Cool. Let me know if that's better. Um, yeah. So the only reason I'm not showing you this other repo is cause I, I'm exposing the API key there, which I was trying to hide with dot M real quick, uh, like two minutes after I was supposed to start streaming, but I didn't get it to work right away. So I figured we'll just do this here. But this is essentially what the what the component looks like inside of that inside of that project, and we have a uh, sixteen over nine. This and this is enforced. We need to do this because of how we're doing the responsiveness of the embedded iframe, and then we have a username, and so you just pass these values in, and then in this effect, we're basically running a fetch. And we're hitting this Twitch API. They're saying, hey, we want to get uh, info for whichever user you pass in. And then we grab the data, get the JSON, and we take the first item in the array. Essentially, this, this only returns a array with an object if you're streaming. Otherwise, it doesn't return anything. So that's why what we're doing here is we're setting it to the response data. If there's an error, we're setting it to null because later we're using that, this stream data state value further down in our render or our return actually function component. So we're saying, hey, do we have stream data? If so, let's embed all this stuff. If not, let's embed nothing. So I'm gonna actually hard code these, this value right here. I'm not gonna take it off the props just for the purpose of this demonstration. So we have this coming off props, but I'm actually just gonna instantiate a local variable and we'll just use that instead. And then we can change it as we want. Ah, uh, okay, ATD, that's probably why. They probably already had all that stuff set up under the hood. I was just trying to do it real quick. Um, didn't look at the docs, so. Next time I'll, I'll have that up and running, promise. So instead of having this inception-y thing go on, I'm gonna change the, the username that we're looking at so it's somebody else's stream. This is CM Griffin. He's currently enjoying himself on stream. It seems like he has this cool little style. Um, but you can see, responsive. However, if I were to put spell his name wrong, imagine there's no XYZ, then we see nothing. We haven't embedded anything. So some of the notes I have from some of the folks in the party corgi uh, chat. And this was a Ryan Warner note is he would like to be able to allow an offline component. So I think that's pretty cool. 
if we do basically, let's see here, if we just added a prop that says offline component. And so again, in our other file, what we would do is offline component. And then someone could pass whatever they want. Um, and what I'm gonna do here, again, I'm just gonna create a, create a local one that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, offline component. We're just gonna make it a function and it's just gonna return Let's just do a paragraph tag. And we're just gonna say offline component. We don't really need to do much more. And then basically I'm just gonna check that this works by saying, hey, if this if we don't have any stream data, as in we set it to null, or it remained in its initial state of null because the response that came in was empty, then if we have a value there, we're gonna render all this stuff. The, this wrapper, this iframe. Here we're rendering null, but now we can actually render the offline component. And so if we were to go, we're still using Crifgris in XYZ, which is not a user as far as I know. And as you can see now, we're not rendering anything. It's probably because I did something wrong here. Offline component. All right, off to a good start. I thought that would be a pretty easy way to start, but apparently not. All right. So we don't have stream data. I'm just gonna log that out. This is how I essentially do my work. <laughs> Login, check in. Hmm. Let's just double check our builds are working. Nope, that's why. Offline component has already been declared. That's, I'm not using a value there, but okay. Let's see, did that build? Offline component has already been declared. Ah, yes, I'm done. Okay, there we go. Objects are not, or yeah, that's right, because I had it right the first time. Cool. All right, so we have a null value. Functions are not valid as React children, that's right. Yes, I'm gonna just do this. return this and then we'll get rid of all of this stuff cool and then we can just do this because what i was doing was completely incorrect it's been a long day cool so now we have an offline component rendered Yes, ATD, I am back to Dracula. Yes, it's my favorite theme probably. Uh, let's see, just checking the chat. Will it throw an error? I don't know, that's a good question. I have a feeling it won't. It might. We might get an, a linter error. But if we change this here, go back to the bottom of the file, change this. Ah. Yeah, look, there you go. ATD. It's using in it's use it's not using Pascal case, so it doesn't seem to be parsing or compiling properly. Let's see, there's probably 
error somewhere in here? Nope. Well, let's just undo that anyway. Cool. So this sort of works. So basically, what we can do here is we can say that this is null, or better idea, let's see. Do I have prop types installed? I don't think so. All right. Oh, actually, I think I do. I do have prop types installed. Smart. I did it right, everybody. Okay, so offline component needs to be added to our prop types because now it's another value that's gonna be passed in to this component. I'm gonna to have to look up what this one is. I think it's element. I gotta double check that. Um, but I'm not gonna require this. So that means if somebody doesn't pass it in, we have to give it some sort of value. So I'm just gonna give it a null value because if they don't pass it in and we go to render it here, like, we, we don't want anything to show up, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this. So now what we can do is we can actually use, use the, instead of this fake component I created, we can do that. Offline component. Yeah, I love prop types just because it makes it so easy to see what's going on. Um, I put them at the bottom of the file just because that's how I did it at my previous job, but I know some people prefer to do it at the top, and that may be a better way, to be honest, just so you can see what you're looking at in terms of uh, props and components off the bat. All right, so here, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna check what this is, because it should be null, it totally is, and so we're not rendering anything now, great. All right, I'm just gonna move this up here. This is just our reference that we may refer back to, but we don't need it in the middle of our work. Okay, so now if we go back, just to confirm it still works. There we are, cool. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this console log and I'm gonna commit this. Actually, I'm not gonna commit it. I'm gonna remove this and then I'm gonna commit it. Cool. So let's go into Git here. Double check our changes. Oh, this is the wrong, I just exposed my key. Anyway, that's what happens. All right, here, here's what we're looking for. So we added this comment. I'll just leave it there for now. It'll come out later. We added a new prop for offline component, which will get rendered instead of null. And we added this prop type. So we had pretty simple change. Um, and then we're gonna say we add offline component prop render when user not online. Cool. Cool. All right. We saw nothing. Uh, yeah, I hope not. <laughs> cool. All right, so. Right now, as you can see, we're, this is like heavily tied to Twitch, but what I wanna do is I actually wanna make it so that someone can pass in a service or a platform prop, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and that's gonna represent a couple things. It can, or have a couple options, I, sh I should say. It should be YouTube, it should be Mixer, it should be Twitch. Those should be the options. Um, and right now, I think I'm just gonna add this mixer support on this stream, and then maybe in the future I'll add YouTube since that's not quite as widely used. So we have an offline component, and then we're gonna add a new prop called platform. And this is gonna be a string, and this is gonna be required because I need to know, and by I, I mean the package, needs to know which platform you're streaming on so it can handle the logic in terms of making these API calls. Um, okay, cool. And I just want to double check this. I think that's right. Prop types. So 
So this is the prop types package. This is what we're using to check our, our props and sort of just define what they are in terms of their value. Yeah, so here we go. This is what I was talking about. There's there's a couple different types and a prop prop types.node anything that can be rendered <laughs> containing these types. But we're looking for a React element because that's what's gonna be passed in as the prop for the offline component. So I think element is right, so let's stick with that for now. Cool. All right, now, one thing I wanna do here is I prefer to, when I'm destructuring my props, to organize them alphabetically. And you could destructure them here, you know, and just do API key, whatever, um, aspect ratio username, but I personally don't like that um, for one reason, and it's just because when I'm using a new component, something I often find myself doing is just logging out the props altogether. And when they're destructured here, then you have to log each of the values individually, which I, I don't love. So, all right, let me just check the chat real quick. Ah. I need to find a way to blow up the text for my, my chat window here, ATD, so I can see more easily what you're saying. Um, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. So API key aspect ratio, now we need to do this. That's alphabetical. And then next would come platform. Let's see if we did that below. Yes, okay. And we don't need a default prop because it is a required prop. All right. So right now we have a value of Twitch coming in um, from our test, our test React app, I, as I call it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna just, again, define this. And right now we have Twitch. So I'll uncome at this later. So basically what we need to do is inside of this use effect, we really wanna make different calls based on the platform value. So I could sort of do this in a couple different ways. Um, I'm thinking we could abstract these to another location. And maybe we'll do that in the future, but for, for right now, that as simple as I'm just gonna use an if statement or a switch. And then what we can do is maybe we can um, make these separate functions. So we'll do something like function fetch uh, Twitch, Twitch data, right? And so we can modularize this this fetch call and the state setting can be just put in here. And then we can actually say, we can actually get rid of this. Yeah, no, totally ATD. I, and my thinking is that maybe these fetch, the only reason I have this in here right now is because I want to be able to set the state in these uh, callback functions. However, my ideal would be to abstract all of these different fetches into a utility, just called like data fetching or something, and then to import them into this file and call them. But I'm just going to do this incrementally. So uh, let's, let's use a switch here. So we want to do it based on the platform value. And we have a couple. Right now it's Twitch. Do I need to make constants for these strings? Maybe, maybe not. Right now I'm going to hard code them later. We'll improve this. It'll get better. Nine viewers in the chat, wow. What a crew, what a crew. Hey everybody, if you're just joining the chat, um, we're working a little bit more on this NPM package that I'm hoping to release in the next few weeks to help streamers embed their stream in their site. 
Hey, Mitya. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, all of my apologies. Um, thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate it, as always. So I'm thinking we do something as, like this. Cool, I got it right. Nice. At least I get one thing right on the stream, right? So here, I'm gonna add a case. I'm gonna add the case for YouTube just to have it, but we'll, we'll probably uh, not work on this right now. And then default, um, what I wanna do is console.log. I guess it should be an error. We could throw an error, but for debugging purposes right now, I'm just gonna say um, platform prop is Hey, digital drummer. Yeah, so th what this package does, and right now, let's see if it's still functioning even though I just broke a bunch of stuff. So right now what it does is it, if you're streaming, it will embed your stream into the site that you're using this component with and embeds it responsibly. So you can basically just drop, let's see. Basically this is what it'll look like when you import when you install the npm package, import it and use it in your React component, you can just drop Twitch plugin, which I'm going to have to rename now that I'm adding support for other platforms. So basically, you, you're going to give it a key, your username, an aspect ratio so that we can make sure that the responsiveness looks right. And then a component that you want to be rendered when offline. Because right now what happens is if you're offline, we're not rendering anything. But I made this an optional prop, so if you want to pass in something when you're not streaming, like a link or a, um, say a headshot of yourself with a link to your Twitch channel, whatever it may be, you can create your own component and then just dump it into this prop and the package will take care of it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm essentially abstracting some of this stuff. So this was how I was fetching the Twitch info. And right now, what I want to do is when when it's Twitch, we want to run this this function. So let's see let's see that that works. I'm actually also going to add logs to all of these just so we can see. Oop. Close, close. There we go. So it says Twitch right now. I'm actually gonna chase this username again. Like I said, I'm using one locally here, or I was, uh, const username equals CM Griffin. Cool. I think he's still online. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh yes, because that is taking precedence. Cool, so. As you can see, Digital Drummer, I just changed. Yeah. Yeah, ATD, he sure does. Oh, Digital Drummer, it's a little low. All right, let me bump it up for you. Sorry, I'm getting all my mic settings. How's that? Is that a little bit better for y'all? Should be a little bit hotter. It's probably because I don't have a mic arm, so I'm moving away a little bit from the mic. So you got this going on, right? We see that it's Twitch. All right, let's 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 check what happens if we change it to Mixer. Mixer, perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to create a function, fetch Mixer data. We're actually gonna copy this because it's gonna be the same exact thing pretty much, except we're gonna need to change this. So to do update API URL. We're also gonna need to probably pass in some auth info here to do update API key slash headers. It might be a different header than the client ID. And then here we're gonna do the same thing. We're probably just gonna console.log res because we just wanna see what it looks like comment all this out uh, 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 uh. 
And then this message can actually change to be from the mixer API. Cool. And we're still gonna wanna do the same thing there. All right, let's now go look at the mixer docs. I was looking at these the other day. Should have taken some notes, but I didn't. I don't know, ATD, I got this working the other day. So let's see how it goes. I'm hoping that I can actually make the call from the browser and that I don't have to incorporate some sort of node endpoint. That'd be pretty lame. And if that if it's if that's the case, I may just abandon doing this altogether. Um, in terms of supporting Mixer, the Twitch one, I think I'm gonna keep. All right, so it's someone's making tea. All right, they got. I guess they got two hundred sixty-two dollars to go to the E3 conference because they're making tea. That's interesting. All right, so Mixer developer docs. So we wanna look at the rest reference and we're looking at this, I believe. Turns the latest ongoing broadcast from the current user. Yeah. Data type broadcast. You gotta give it an ID, that's right. Let's see. All right. So there is a way to see your own ID. Let me just Log in real quick. So I'm gonna log into Mixer. Cool. I'm gonna go to my channel, which is, I forget how to get there. It's one of the reasons I switched over to Twitch is because uh, the Mixer UI is definitely not my favorite. Let's do this the manual way. There we go. So what I want is each broadcast has an ID, which if I remember correctly, so that's chat. Somewhere here in one of our network requests, we can parse it. Yeah, ATD it is, they bought Mixer was bought by Microsoft and Microsoft has been basically trying to poach some of the hottest uh, streamers on Twitch, specifically the esports folks. So they have actually paid some serious money to people like $3 million a year um, to stream exclusively on Mixer. So. Yes, this is definitely just like uh, cloud operations where you have Azure versus AWS. I think it's pretty similar. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this is my ID. So let's let's see how we how far we get with that as a guess. Let's go back real quick. Oh, can we not? Okay. So basically, there's an endpoint. But first I need to find what the, the full string is. Insomnia. Actually, luckily Insomnia saves this all for us. So, aha, invalid auth header, yep. So, how did I do this before? I think I actually got it to work without a header at one point. I think I was doing it via curl. Mixer API, that looks sort of right. All right, so that is what comes back when there's not a stream. Now let's see what happens when there, I think that's the endpoint I'm looking for. So let's go back to the Mixer homepage, if that's possible. God, UI doesn't handle uh, scaling very well. Yep, 
Yeah, it's crazy to see Microsoft have all of this stuff going on now, like nuts. But I do, I love VS Code. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, if I were to have to work at one of the bigger tech companies, I think Microsoft would probably be the one. I mean, they have stuff that going on too that I sort of don't really like. Um, but uh, hard to, hard, that's hard to say, I find a, one of the big tech companies that doesn't have that, so. Um, but right now, I'm very happy where I am, so. Okay, so let's see, that should return. Ah, that's because that is not the broadcast number. Channels, broadcast. Let's go back to the docs here. Channels. So it doesn't look like there is a broadcast. So I'm just doing the wrong endpoint. Yes, okay. So let's do curl, go through our history here. Yes, I think that's what it is, broadcasts. Maybe? Broadcast, broadcast ID. That might be the wrong ID, but let's try that again with this other ID that I just copied from an active streamer. Nope, same thing. Okay. I know there is, cause there's a user ID and there's a broadcast ID and there's a um, chat ID here. Let's do this. Let's put it to the bottom so we have a little more room to work. So I'm gonna refresh this page. I don't want to be on the mobile. All right, look at all these. So somewhere in here is a broadcast ID. Channels, front end versions. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wallets, okay, interesting, we're getting more. Types, channels, channels. That might be the ID, it might be the channel. Oh, here we go, broadcast. That's the one. So if we go and we do this. Broadcast. Hmm. Could have sworn that was it. Let's do this. There we go. Boy, it doesn't really turn, return that much information, does it? Is test stream false channel ID? Okay, so let's see. The URLs here, his URL is his username. What would happen if we were to try to go to it by channel ID? So this is the key right here. We're looking to see if they're online. So that's the broadcast channel broadcast. Okay, and then if I were to try this again, let's use my broadcast ID because it should return an empty object. Let's go to our broadcast dashboard. There it was, so broadcast, because I'm not broadcasting, so I guess it's it's not found. So it looks like what happens is if we try to get info about a broadcast that's not found, we're gonna get a status code 404, which is right, but if it's active, we will get this object here. Let's see what's in here. Let's just open a new file, language mode, we'll do JSON. We'll format all that. Ah. Well, there's multiple, really. Well, let's just format it anyway. Prettier. Okay, so we have a started at, an ID, online, is test stream, and a channel ID. I'm wondering how we can use the channel ID. Oh, hey, thanks for the follow, Angel. Um, 
apparently my Streamlab stuff is behind things that it shouldn't be. Let me fix that. There we go. Now, if you were to follow me again, you would see that it's in the right place. Hey, Angel. Um, just to catch you up, Angel, we are building a, ooh, it looks like CM Griffin. Is he still online? I think he is. Ah, it's because we're doing that, yeah. If we switch this to Twitch. So Angel, what we're building here is a React component that's gonna be published as an NPM library that embeds your stream automatically and makes it a responsive iframe. So, did I disappear? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, he, he does that on his stream. It's, but I mean, he also seems to have the best fun and he, I've only watched the stream a couple times. He has some really dope shirts, I must say. Um, he's got these cool like pattern hoodies. Can't hate that. All right, so I'm gonna change that back to Mixer. So Angel, what we're doing now is we're adding support for Mixer. So, do, 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 do. So what we ended up doing down here was we embed this stream data username. Okay. So we might actually need to make another call, which not looking forward to doing, but cool. So mixer. So if we take this little snippet we did here, we're basically doing, we're doing this call so we can just drop that in there. We're not using any headers, so let's just get rid of that completely. This is the channel ID. So, so since the channel ID is associated with the user, I'm wondering, we might need to even make a call before this to find out the user's name. Uh, Digital drummer, I really like this uh, autonomous desk. I actually am sitting in an autonomous chair as well. Just got this recently, super comfortable. Um, didn't want to go for like one of the gamer chair styles, but it's definitely super comfy. All right, so we have a channel ID. Now let's see, what happens? Can we get user data about a channel? Patch, no. Put, get. I wonder how the embeds work here. So, is this an iframe? So it looks like it's a video. Uh, it's playing a blob, okay. Okay, looks like they're using Angular. Uh, yeah, Digital Drummer, I got this one. Virgo chair. There you go, drop it in chat. So we, let's see. So Twitch has an a, has documentation about how they do their embed stuff. Let's see if there's even, if Mixer doesn't have this, then we might be out of luck. Okay. Okay, that's pretty easy. <laughs> So that's how you embed the player, getting an embed. To get the embed URL for a channel, simply add the channel's name to the following URLs where it says channel name.
I don't know about you, but I do not see something that says channel name. Channel name, chat options, embed styling. I don't want to style it yet. So I have a feeling that it's going to be player slash channel name or something like that. This is definitely not the, these docs are clearly not finished. Yeah, you got a digital drummer, enjoy. Sable CoStream, VOD, provide VOD, provide a timestamp. Hmm. All right, well, let's try something real quick. Let's just see what happens if we just throw a iframe in here. Okay, <laughs> so it embeds a player. I don't know where it's getting any of its information from, but is that, what is that? That's so strange. I'm gonna scale these down, because I can't see. Okay. It's embedded, right? Let's see. Once you have a URL, just create an HTML iframe with the source property. Okay. So it's telling me that the embed URL is this player, and then to substitute the channel's name where it says channel ID that doesn't exist in the docs. Aha, good idea. So where was that? Located the top right of your channel. So this will show me what it should look like. Get embers, share, embed, copied. So let's see what this looks like. Oh geez. So yeah, it's embed player slash username. Okay, let's see how that works. Except instead of me, since that will be empty, let's use our friend Drag Caro here. Something's happening. Hey, look at that. Cool. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, yes, ATD, I use Firefox exclusively, pretty much. I was using the dev edition, but I had some issues when I first started at Fauna. I forget with what and switched to the, to the regular Firefox Quantum, and now I just use that all the time. So this looks like pretty much the same thing. It's basically the username gets interpolated, okay? And so we're also gonna need to come up with some logic here for choosing the different iframes. Cool. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a conditional. We're gonna change this later. Uh, platform equals Twitch. Uh, Twitch. Then what we wanna do is we're gonna render out this iframe that already works, thankfully. Then we're gonna do another conditional if the platform, and there's many ways we could do this. I'm just doing it in this little dirty fashion here so that we can confirm that things are working, but um, why is there, I don't want that. I just want the, the normal stuff. Okay. Uh -huh. What's going on here? 
The platform is marked as required, but it's undefined. Did I uncomment it? So I have comment, platform is a mixer. Yeah, it's so weird that the, I wish the channel ID and username were um, interchangeable here, but they're not. So this should, I would think, we should be seeing, oh, okay, that's why. So I should be fetching, fetching this mixer data, which turns out we might not even need to do. But I think, I think we need to do it just to confirm that somebody's online. See if this works. Yep, there we go. No chorus issues. <laughs> yeah. All right, no chorus issues. That's dope. That never happens. So cool. So I'm. There's one or two things here where, basically. The easiest thing to do would be to know this channel ID right away, but I don't want to require another prop just because it's a different platform. So let's see if there's a way that I can take the username and get the channel ID. And then that channel ID should, if we get the channel ID, then we can use it for the embed. The embed, so this uses the username, whereas the status info we're getting in our fetch method up here is actually using the channel ID. So that's, means we might need to make two calls, but let's see, users. Is there, there's no users here? That's all the way down there. Users, users. So we can get public data. Uint, the user ID, okay. User with channel. Uh, okay, yeah. So it looks like if we do, so I'm gonna comment this all out. So if we hit this endpoint, users slash user, this will return to us. So it takes a U int. So I think that's just the user ID. Um, yeah, I mean, basically you could, with GraphQL, you could do something like, you could hit an endpoint that you have like a node script running or just have like a open node endpoint listening for requests. And then basically that could trigger two requests, two different uh, mixer endpoints, wait for them to resolve and then put the data together in the way you want it and return it. So that would sort of look um, let's see, drawing, Google drawing. Yeah, let's do this. No, not that. Let's do this. So basically what that would look like is if we were to do, I want to scribble. So it's our component. It makes a HTTP request here to like a node environment. And then the node environment hits however many other endpoints we need. Say there's three. Then the data all comes back into, we wait for it to resolve in here. I think it's even called the resolver. I'm not super familiar with like the technical lingo here in GraphQL. But once you have the data from your three results in here, you could essentially then build your object, your like container of data, and then that could go back in one. And so then you would have one request, one response, but you're really hitting multiple places. Yeah, I mean, it could be. Yeah, you could do that. Um, it depends on like what endpoint you're using. I think Apollo is like, it sits in the middle here between the your application and the endpoints that you're using. 
yeah, no worries. That's that's my understanding. I'm still getting used to um, GraphQL, but that's that's my understanding. All right, so here we want to do users user because again we're gonna probably take a username and let's let's just use our friend's name since he's streaming having a ton of fun. Okay, so here we go. Now we're gonna fetch. So it's gonna be user and then it'll be the username. So in this case, it's gonna be drag caro. So this should return us some data, I think. No such endpoint, oh really? Oh yeah, that's because I'm using the username. Ah, so I need the user ID, that's right. So I'm thinking about this in the wrong way. So you can pass the user ID, but what do you do when you have like a user string? So broadcast takes in a broadcast ID. That's what I want. I think this is what I want. The ID of the user. Hmm. Seems like Mixer wants the, it uses the ID, but I have a feeling if we were to use the ID, which I think we determined for this guy is, yeah, this one. So let's copy this. So we want to do that. We want to, what's the end of that? Details, okay. No such endpoint. I don't know, that's uh, users. Ah, okay, maybe I was doing it right. Cookie header is missing, whatever that means. I'm sure I'm missing some sort of auth on that call, but I don't real. It doesn't say that this requires any authentication. Okay, get that out of here. Maybe I just need to so we use the username, but how do we get the, the channel ID from the username? That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Search returns, users who search names are prefixed. So this returns the amount of users. Returns users whose names are prefixed with the provided search term. really don't want to make people pass in two values, but that seems like it might be the solution. Hey, what's up, Lannan DR? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. We're just working on this uh, live stream package, uh, trying to add some mixer support. does not seem right. Aha. User must be a number. Yeah, no, totally. I know it is, but I don't want it to be. I want it to be a string. Welcome to Call of the Wild. 
Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, yay, yay, yay. These docs, these docs. So channels, you can search by an ID or a token, an ID, and then these are all like not things I'm looking for. Hosty, hosters, relationship. Gets all users with roles assigned to the channel. List all users with assigned role. This could be, but I, I need this streamer. Not the. I don't think that's it. Discord turns Discord settings for the channel. Oh yeah, Ben's talk was great. It was awesome. Made it made it super seem like it's very approachable. I've done very little. I did a little playing around with it when I was setting up some CI at work. Um, very cool. Oh, man. I just want to give you broadcast from the current user. So this is current, but it doesn't tell you what arguments it requires for the user. Okay. So let's just see if we can guess what it is, since this is. So broadcast slash current. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> let's see if that does it. Yeah, no such endpoint. I know. I know. What about this? I bet this works. And I'm going to be. It's always going to be the ID, isn't it? Nope, it's not that either. Okay. So, what happens when your docs are not up to date? So, I think we might need to d use both, but maybe we can get away. Maybe there's a trick we can play here where instead of giving the the uh, user ID, maybe we can give it that. That would be cool. It's a platform equals mixer. I'm gonna flip the bit on this just so it forces it to render. Hey, that works. The user ID works, or the broadcast ID. Huh. So it looks like for Mixer users, they don't need to pass in their user ID. They can just pass in their, they could just pass directly in their uh, broadcast ID. Okay. All right, that's cool. At least that works. Like, so what it needs to be is really um, so basically this username really needs to be a Twitch username, and then we actually need to add another prop here, which is going to be. Uh, Mixer broadcast ID. I don't really love that, but I'm just setting these here locally for anybody watching who's just new to the stream um, because I have this linked in another package, but I don't want to expose a key right now. So I'm just doing this instead. Okay. So we need this. It's going to be this guy's. So we're gonna use this drag caros broadcast ID. I'm actually gonna comment this out for a second because so mixer broadcast ID 
which we're gonna use down here in the player. But we need to interpolate this value, so we have to use our good old handy back ticks. And then what I need to do, does it not like that? Oh yeah, because it needs to be, I think. It's, we're, running, we're running JavaScript by doing string interpolation, so. Okay, and then this is gonna be our mixer broadcast ID. So if we go back and flip the bit here, sorry I'm scrolling so much, my screen is gigantic because I wanted to make sure that y'all can see what I'm doing. So, so we have a platform of Mixer, we have a Mixer broadcast ID. Uh, this we can comment out. That's all working. Fetch Mixer data, yeah we're not. We're not doing that right now. We're just logging out Mixer. Later we'll do YouTube. If there is no stream data, which is the case right now, because I'm not actually fetching data for Mixer, then we should be rendering, rendering this. Let's see. Cool. So that works. It's not styled properly, but we can fix that. Awesome. That's dope. Okay, so I'm gonna add that down here. So we're gonna do mixer broadcast ID, prop types, do it as a string. And now I'm thinking that these, the username and stuff, like this isn't gonna be required anymore because someone might be using one or the other. So we're gonna actually now need to default both of these to null or an empty string. Um, Twitch username, cool. All right, so that should still work. So now we're rendering this. Uh, part of the reason that we need to, this is what we need to do to get our iframe styled properly. And then actually we need to get rid of this. ATD, that was actually the, ex I did exactly the same thing. My first uh, open source contribution was to the docs for Brunch, a build tool that nobody uses anymore. Um, uh, I shouldn't say nobody, somebody uses it. But we used it at my first job and we were a Phoenix and Elixir shop. So we were transitioning from Ruby on Rails to Phoenix and Elixir. And at the time, Brunch was the default build tool. And I was going through their docs one day and I found a typo, so I fixed it. But not too long after I was building my own side project at um, just to learn Elixir and Phoenix on my own, and all of the tutorials I was going through at that point were like, new version of Phoenix, first thing you do, rip out Brunch, put in a different build tool. So I am not too familiar with it, but that's where I, I started. All right, cool. So now we have a responsive mixer embed. That's pretty cool. Yo, pretty dope, right? Cool, so we have one other thing that we need to do here. We still need to set up this fetching the data and setting the state so that we have, so that our conditional here works and embeds the, um, embeds the iframe when the user is actively streaming. So right now it's gone because I, I flipped the logic back. But I'm gonna take a break for a minute and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna finish this piece and then that'll probably be all we do for today. So give me about five minutes and I'll see you in a minute.
Hey y'all, I'm back. Sorry about that. Thanks for thanks for being patient. All right, so where we left off is we have this switch statement that runs data fetching conditionally based on the platform prop that comes in. Um, so we know this works, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. I like to add console logs everywhere when I start stuff and then as things start working, I just remove them later. So here we're gonna fetch this mixer data. And right now what we're doing is is we have this going on, but that's that's not really what we need. So I'm gonna console.log the res, which is just the uh, response coming into the dot then callback. And this is not the actual right uh, URL, according to the docs. So now we know that the embed is working with the broadcast ID, which is really great. So that means we should be able to use that same ID to make this call to get information about the broadcast. So, excuse me. So it's broadcasts. And then it's actually gonna be mixer broadcast ID. Let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, and then I need to do, that's right. I did this for a reason. So now we're gonna, we're actually gonna await the response and then this turns, we're gonna turn it into JSON and then we're gonna log out our variable. So the broadcast is not found. And that's because, drag Caro, is he still online? So it looks like he is online. So that should have worked. Let's see. So we have broadcasts. Let's check the docs again, make sure I didn't. Broadcast slash broadcast ID. And the broadcast ID for him. So we'll go in here. Broadcast. That's his ID. Okay, so we had it right. So it's the mixer ID, the platform. What we're doing is we are making a call to the mixer API looking for this broadcast and then we're expecting a response that should tell us whether or not they're online. Broadcast not found. Hmm. Even though I did this earlier, I had this working. Okay, so why is that not working? So we're fetching, fetching the mixer data. This is working, so we can get rid of this log too. So if we go back to our terminal and we check out some of this stuff we did. Ah, that's right. So is this broadcast ID the same as your channel ID? Let's check that out. So this value just store that in my console. So that's one of them. Now let's see, is there a channel? Looks like the broadcast and the channel ID is the same exact thing. So we can probably actually rename this prop. Mixer channel ID. because I think that'll be easier for people to figure out. The broadcast ID is a little strange. Okay. Oh yeah, and then right, this is the call we need to make, is actually, the docs are saying to do one thing, but really this, if we call this right now, we'll be able to see that, uh, yeah, he's online. So that's exactly what we want. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do exactly this. So let me copy and paste. We're actually gonna just fetch, do this, get rid of that. And so here is where we need to interpolate the value. So this is gonna be the mixer channel ID. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, ATD, that's a good question. I haven't thought, I haven't gone that far yet. I haven't gotten that far, I should say. So basically what we want to do, here we're setting it, but what if it comes in empty? I probably need to handle that better. So we want to see that there's, really we want to see a channel ID and an online. I'm just going to check both to be safe. We could probably get away with just is online, but if I want to confirm that we're looking at the right thing. So, so basically here, if response, we can just destructure this instead online. And the other one is called channel ID. Cool. All right, so this will be equal to the response. And then now we can say, if we have a channel ID and we have online, and we probably also need to check that there, the response isn't empty. I'll deal with that in a second. Okay. So for the Twitch one, what we do is we set the response data and we could probably, we probably don't even need to store the data there to be honest, but let's see. Ah, that's right. Here we're using stream data .username. And then down here, we could probably do the same thing. But here we could actually use, I think we could just use the username off the props. I don't even think we need to do that. So I'm gonna add it to do there. But what we wanna do in this mixer fetch is we wanna set the stream data to, and what I'll do is I'll actually set it to the channel ID. Hey, thanks for the follow, B Dan. Appreciate it. Uh, channel ID, does it equal mixer ID? Um, so yeah, basically that's essentially like this mixer channel ID that comes in as a prop uh, also is in the response as the channel ID. So like if we wanna be really uh, explicit about this, we could even say we wanna, conf we want these two things to be the same. And of course the mixer channel ID is a string. So we have to, uh, I guess, coalesce it into a integer, parse it into an integer. All right, so here we're gonna set it to the channel ID and then down here we can, but I don't think we need to do that. I think we just need to do true. Where am I? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna set this to true because the check down below is really a Boolean check. And here, I think we can, I don't think we need to do this either. I think we just need to do the same thing, check that there's certain values. So I'm gonna add it to do. Add check, uh, set stream data to true. And then actually what we can do is we could actually probably here say, make this is live, set is live, and then make that false all the time. Yeah, yeah, ATD, I got those party corgi alerts. That's one thing I've got had for a while on this stream, but um, not so much the other stuff. Okay, fetch Twitch, fetch mixer, okay, let's see. Look at that. Brilliant. Cool, so that works. So now what I wanna do, now that we've discovered how that works, I'm gonna go back and test, update this for Twitch. So we can get rid of this. Yeah, really, yeah. it's a good thing that some of these eSports folks like to stream for a long time. So it's really good for me because if I had to put my own stream in here, then we'd be watching like that in window inception. That's, it's not really fun to watch. Okay, so let's change this to Twitch real quick. 
and we're gonna have to find somebody on Twitch that's live. That's not me. Oh, look at CM. He's still, he's still, he's still out there. Still doing his thing. Cool. So that works. But what we really want to do is down here, we're going to say, hey, we want to set it to true. I'm actually going to comment this out. We're going to console.log our response. I want to see what fields we have coming in so I can check them before setting this to true. Aha, yeah, that's what it was. That's why I was parsing this off. So we're gonna say uh, const stream info equals, and we're gonna take the response has a data field, which is an array, and we want the first one. There's only one in it right here. And you can see the ID, game ID, whatnot and the tag ids so you technically like if we wanted to we could technically do something where we like for twitch we could even take off these these ids for uh tags and then we could look them up and render them below the iframe at some point if that that was something somebody wanted to do um so we just want to make sure that this object isn't empty So we want to, we actually need to check, I think. And this is where this new um, null check is. So like instead of doing this, there's a new API that allows you to do something like, and don't don't quote me here, but it's, it's something like this, where you can say it's if there's data. So instead of having to do these checks. Because this response object, if it comes in without a data field, that that this is not going to work. This assignment. So, and then here, what we want to do is, I think we want to just check that we have stream info. I mean, I could make this a boolean actually. Hey, do we have both data and this data object zero? If so, let's set this to true. this back out cool so it looks like Chris just went offline or maybe not this person's online key berries let's do it You get, follow and get notified when undefined is live. What's going on here? Oh, it must be this, this check must be bad. Maybe I'm getting too clever or not clever enough. Undefined, I feel like would be a pretty cool name for a, a show. So we wanna see what this response is. Huh, what's going on here? Oh, I think I know. Yeah, so the user login. It's the iframe, yeah, there it is. It's actually, this needs to be the Twitch username. There we go. So look, I don't think I was wrong. I think I was just doing something wrong down there. Let's see. So we're parsing that here. Maybe we wanna actually do return some of this stuff. Yeah, let's do that. And then let's update this again. Twitch.
Dope. So that works. So we have Mixer and Twitch working, which is very cool. Um, but what I want to do now is now that we're doing a true false here, I want this state to start false and stay false. And then in our catch statements, we don't even need to set this to null because it'll already be false. Um, and we can actually rename our values here. So we have stream data. And for those of you not familiar, I just copied with con command C and I'm gonna find with control F. But what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna replace all of these with a new value. Um, and I'm gonna call it is live. I don't know if that's the best name, but yeah, ATD, this is nice that we actually got something done. Very nice. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So I want this to be case sensitive, match case. So there's only two instances. So this is gonna become is live. And then set stream data is gonna become set is live, okay? So now we only have three instances of that and we're gonna replace all. So now if we check this out, it should still work. That works. Let us go and just double check that our mixer app is working. And it works, folks, it works. Oh, Dom, what's up, dude? Hey, so Dom, uh, what we've done so far is basically now, depending on what service you're using, when you're live, you can embed a responsive iframe of your stream if you're on Mixer or if you're on Twitch. So let's, let's switch it up, let's check it out. Let's show Dom what's up. Here it is on Twitch. Same thing, responsive. Boom, look at that. Yeah, this is, um, I'm also planning on potentially adding some YouTube uh, functionality here, but uh, what we're seeing, I'm actually live coding these values because my uh, test React app that's linked to this local repo that we're working in uh, has a key exposed, so I don't wanna do that. Um, so actually that's that's what I plan on doing today. So I'm gonna clean this up and we're actually gonna undo these comments since we do want to be able to see this, um, to use these props. M, N, O, all right. So there we go, we got these. And then we can get actually get rid of these values. Let's see it, did I leave any other bullshit in here? I left this in here, YouTube. That's that's the next one we have to solve. Platform prop is required. Okay, so off screen, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if this works. I'm gonna go and find, what was her name, Kai Berries. She seemed like she was having fun. Oh, I guess this Andrew Arcade is also playing Animal Crossing. So in my test react app, what I'm doing is I'm setting the platform to Twitch. I'm setting the username to Andrew. I have my aspect ratio and my API key already in there. And then if we look at our prop types, API key I got, aspect ratio I got. We don't need this because we are using uh, Twitch in this case offline component. Uh, Dom, this is something we did earlier. Right now, uh, what happens is if you ren if you pass in uh, L like a React component to offline component, that will take, that's what will render when you're not actively broadcasting. So whatever that may be, you can do. Um, that was a request um, from Ryan Warner Coates. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Google's documentation. documentation. Um, all right, so let me save this repo over here. 
And now we should see something in here. Nothing. Oh. Okay. Let's troubleshoot. Do I have anything in my logs? Check one. Nope. Did this guy go offline all of a sudden? No, it looks like he he is live. All right, let's log out our props real quick. Props. Well, ignore that. <laughs> ah, okay, that's what it is. Yeah, so I just exposed that. I'm gonna have to swap that out before next time. That's my B. All this for nothing. All right, there we go. Look. There's his, and then now, let's, let's see if I can get it to work. Mixer channel ID equals, we're gonna call it Twitch, or Mixer platform. And then we're gonna use our friend uh, Dreg Caro again. This guy's been, been all over. All over our stream. So here's his his uh, channel ID, and now if I enter that here, now we're embedding his mixer stream. Look at that, dope, cool. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna do for today. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do though is before we finish. I'm gonna commit this. Also, we, re, we we do need to rename this plugin at some point. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add this all. I'm gonna say we're adding Mixer and Twitch support. New props. Git push origin master. We'll push it up to GitHub. Cool. And now let's actually go to GitHub, and I'll just show you guys where this where this project lives. So I have a repo called Twitch plugin somewhere here. So I'm gonna drop this in the chat. If you want to take a look at the source code uh, for what we did today or on one of the other streams, then uh, feel free. I'm happy to take suggestions if you wanna file issues. Uh, so Dom, it is not polling. Um, basically, when the page renders, we on the initial render, um, we're using use effect with an empty dependency array. So this happens once. The first time the component renders, we check the platform. If we have a platform prop, then we make a data call and we set a state here saying that we're live. And then below, all we're doing is conditional rendering of a wrapper and the actual iframes because the iframe needs to be absolutely positioned in the wrapper so that it'll be responsive. But um, yes, yeah, Dom, yeah, that's that's exactly right. Um, I'm intending this to be used for like. Gatsby sites and stuff. So I don't know if the polling is necessary, but again, for stuff like that, please feel free to hit me up um, or file issues in the repo because I have a list of things I wanna do uh, based on conversations I've had with some folks. So next up is YouTube support, I think. And this idea is coming from the Party Corgi community. We we're gonna have a, or we do have a Party Corgi site, which I believe is partycorgi.com. And nope, that's not it. I forget what the URL is. Um, but basically, because there's so many people in the Corgi community that are streamers, I wanna come up with some way where we can pass in a list of streamers and have some sort of, uh, some sort of choice or preference or randomization behavior where we choose one person who's live and then uh, embed them in case we have multiple people at once.
Uh, yeah, Dom, um, that sounds really great. I do want to get more familiar with use query, and I know you've been diving deep into it, doing cool uh, egghead tutorials. If anybody hasn't seen, Dom has some cool content up now. Come on, come on, egghead. Yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna pull it up, dude. You, you're working hard, so let's let's do it. Cause I, I know how to do it now. Cause I was on here the other day looking up your stuff. So Demetrius. So Dom has been doing a bunch of courses here, but as you can see, he has some react queries. So oh, I can't link this. All right. So just go, just go on egghead search for Demetrius Clark. You'll find his uh, react query stuff. Uh, but Dom, uh, you and I will talk off stream. Maybe you can come on uh, next week or very soon and you and I can implement that together and get the get the fresh subscriptions going. That'd be sick. All right, dude. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to hop off now. Uh, thanks for joining on a Friday. I know Friday's not always the most convenient time, but it's it's when I like to when I like to stream, start the weekend with a drink, write some code, chat with some folks. So, again, I'm Ryan Harris. I'm a dev at Fauna. You can find me at ryanharris.dev um, where I just published a new article about use context as part of my React, React Hooks Revisited series. And then you can find me online at all these various places. Um, most often I'm on Twitter just uh, shit posting or something like that during the day. So uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Feel free to file issues in the repo. And if I don't talk to you this weekend, I'll see you next week. Peace.